We are prepping for the Iowa Hawkeyes matchup. We're breaking down the people who know on offense, the people who know on defense, and so much more, including my biggest three concerns for the matchup for the Gophers this week versus Iowa. Let's go. You are Locked On Golden Gophers, your daily podcast on the Minnesota Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Gopher fans? You're listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name's Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week, Monday through Friday. Now, yesterday, we didn't have a show because for some reason, the microphone did not want to work. It did not want to connect. It did not want to let me talk about the Iowa Hawkeyes. So I did an entire 28-minute show. And it was like, nah, not today. There was no sound. Your boy tried to get back on and it was like, nope, the microphone's still not going to work, but we're back at it. We have fixed the technical issues. I have done our prediction show with Tristan tonight and you are definitely not going to want to miss that show. It is probably our best one yet. And the final bits of that show is probably the best bits of the entire show. So you're going to want to tap in for the entire thing, but I wanted to get back on here. I wanted to give it a second try and get it posted, learning about the Iowa offense, the Iowa defense, and my biggest three concerns for this game and the Gophers in week four. So we're diving in. We're going to fly through it all. And let's talk about the Iowa Hawkeyes offense first. So first you've got head coach Kirk Ferentz. Now he is entering year 26 as the coach and consistency has definitely been there for him. He won the final year of the Big Ten West last year, but as Gopher fans know, he didn't win Floyd last year, and that was the biggest thing. So although the entire fan base wants to argue about that one, if not for dropping the Nevada or Nevada, Nebraska game in 2023, Kirk Ferentz actually would have been a three-time West Division champion to end the Western Division for the Big Ten. That being said, the divisions are officially gone now, and Iowa has recorded eight win seasons or more in the last nine seasons. So overall... In eight of or eight wins or more in the last nine seasons, the only year that they didn't get it was in the COVID 2020 year where they were six and two and on pace to do it again, but alas, couldn't get all of the games in that season. But the biggest move for the Iowa Hawkeyes was their switch at offensive coordinator. Gone are the days of Brian Baby Ferentz, and in comes Tim Lester. Now, it felt like a super safe hire, but Iowa has been doing a little bit better on offense so far through the non-conference stages of the schedule. So far, Iowa has been 53rd in total offense and 58th in scoring offense, and this was a team that was in the 120s for both of those categories last season. So that is a big-time improvement for the Hawkeyes. That being said... Their offense is still 108th in passing, which feels more so like what we've seen from the Gophers for the last two years, which is running, running, and then running some more. So Caleb Johnson is their running back. I've been telling you here, about, telling you about him here on the show for the past two off seasons. When we break down every single one of the Gophers opponents, I told you, even though he's a Hawkeye, I really like Caleb Johnson. I think he has a ton of talent. I think he has the upside to be a top tier running back in the Big Ten, and that had not come to fruition over these last two years, but he is doing it now. He is doing it big. He leads the entire nation in rushing yards through three weeks, and I have just been overall impressed with him, so the Gophers are going to have to find a way to slow him down. But with that being said, Iowa is currently 2-1 and one with their sole loss being a one-point loss to the rival Iowa State Cyclones. And if you're watching that game, Iowa gave it away more so than Iowa State actually won the game, just like the Gophers gave away the North Carolina game more so than North Carolina winning the game. Now, the Hawkeyes also struggled with Troy last week for three quarters of the game, and that's a team that Nevada, the Gophers team that they just blew off blew out last week, uh, Nevada beat Troy. And so overall, if you're looking at the transitive property, which doesn't actually work in football, but if it did, the Gophers should have a good chance in this game. Now, if you're looking at the quarterback one for the Iowa Hawkeyes, it's Cade McNamara. Now the box score doesn't look terrible for him, but if you watch the games, this man is consistently hurting Iowa and killing their offensive drives. He has 526 yards on the year with three touchdowns and two interceptions, but he has missed wide open for touchdowns. He has had interceptions dropped as well. And on top of that, he really hasn't even truly used their number one pass catcher in Luke Lachey, who has nine catches for 88 yards so far through three games. 
So overall, the person that is getting a lot of the catching done for this Iowa team is Jacob Gill. He leads all pass catchers with 137 yards and a touchdown. But the thing that Iowa has going for it right now is its offensive line, and it has so much experience returning. They have their center back, they have their left tackle back, they have their right guard back, and they have their right tackle back. And then on top of that, they had two guys with experience, but Bo Stevens steps in, takes the fifth starting spot, and they have a guy, Nick DeJong, in that sixth offensive lineman spot that could very well be a starter if called upon. So overall, six quality offensive linemen that have just really gelled well in these early stages of the season. But like I said, the name to know most on this offense is Caleb Johnson, who we have been mentioning time and time again on the show. And right now, Caleb Johnson is this offense and it isn't even close. So that's everything you need to know when it comes to the Iowa offense. Uh, overall, their special teams I'll throw in there has not been quite the same as it has been over the last three, four years. And that could be a difference maker in this one. If the Gophers can find a way to win the special teams battle in this week, that could be the difference in this matchup. But what we're going to do next is we're going to talk about the defense. We're going to learn about how many players are back. Is this defense still elite or are they falling off? We're going to dive into all of that coming up next. First, I want to talk to you about our friends over at FanDuel because uh, FanDuel is America's number one sports book. And right now we have something a little bit different to offer you and it is for a limited time. So be sure to cash in while you can because all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. And all you need is a Google account and a current form of payment and you can cancel at any time. So just visit handle.com and download America's number one sports book. And also while you're at it, if you want to throw $5 down, the Gophers are underdogs. So be sure to go and get that Gophers dub. But again, visit FanDuel.com and download America's number one sports book, FanDuel official uh, sports book of Locked On. Now, on top of that, I want to talk about a new friend of the show. So Gophers fans, if you are listening, have you heard about ROY? It stands for Return on You, and it's a new platform that lets the fans, you, that you listening right now to Lockdown Golden Gophers get involved in NIL like never before, making contributions directly to your favorite athletes. By supporting players directly, you can help shape their rosters, retain talent, and keep your favorite athletes out of the transfer portal. And as you all know, NIL has changed the game for athletes, and Roy is changing the game uh, for NIL for fans. So right, the things to know about it is that when fans contribute to a successful campaign, they receive access to exclusive content from the athlete, such as their announcement decision, behind the scenes footage, and other personal reflections, all of which are only available to the fans who supported that athlete. And on top of that, you can engage with athletes on their NIL journey. By using Roy, fans not only support the athletes financially, but they also become a name or a part of their name image likeness journey, helping them succeed both on and off the field. And fans' contributions are securely held and only distributed to the athlete. If the athlete makes the decision that aligns with the fan's support, if not, the money is returned to you, the fan. So download Roy for iOS or Android and enter referral code locked on and you'll get automatically entered into sweep take, sweepstakes to win $5,000 cash. So you can support your athletes. You can enter sweepstakes to get $5,000 cash all by going to visit joinroy.com uh, for additional details. No purchase necessary and void where prohibited. But get the Roy app on iOS or Android and start making an impact on your favorite team. Use referral code Locked On for an opportunity to win five thousand dollars cash. Definitely download it today. Get off the sidelines and into the NIL game with Roy. All right, Gophers fans, we're talking about the Iowa Hawkeyes defense. And this Hawkeyes defense, it if you look at just the production, it looks like it's maybe falling off a little bit, but I wouldn't go that far. Now, the Iowa defense, as it currently stands, is 29th in total defense, 76th in pass defense, 5th in rush defense, 33rd in scoring defense, and turnovers, they're tied for 26th, sacks, they're tied for 22nd. Now, if you're looking at these numbers overall and you look at Iowa historically over the course of the season, that may feel low compared to what we're used to seeing, but it's still super early in the season. So I would not count them out by any means. 
because it could take a game or two to flip them back into the top 20 in every single category. And all of a sudden you're looking at an Iowa defense you're used to seeing. But last year, uh, Last year, Iowa had 14 players that logged 400 plus snaps. Now, of those 14 players, Iowa has 10 back on this defense. Jay Higgins, who is their highest rated player last year, 89.4 on PFF, which is an elite grade. He was actually the second highest graded, only to Sebastian Castro, who finished with a 91.2. But Higgins had 171 tackles with two sacks, a pick, and a forced fumble. And Sebastian Castro had 67 tackles, one sack, and three interceptions with a forced fumble. Now, Quinn Schulte is also back. Nick Jackson is also back. Xavier Nwangpa is also back. All of those players graded above an 80 on PFF, which is a great grade for those for anybody. Now, all five of those players were graded higher even than any of the Iowa Hawkeyes that went to the NFL, including Cooper DeGene, including Joe Evans, including Logan Lee. Also, four of the five players in that grouping I just mentioned had more tackles than every or than any Gophers player, including their leading tackler last season. And Jay Higgins had three times as many tackles as the Gophers leader last season. And that's not even mentioning guys like Yaya Black, like Deontay Craig, like Ethan Herkett, like Aaron Graves. This defense is going to be a nightmare in the conference as they continue to build back into it all, as they continue to build the chemistry, get some of the younger guys involved and what have you. This defense is going to find itself back in the top 15 at the very minimum in most categories. Now, right now, if you're looking at a, a, route to try and attack the defense it seems like it would be in the passing game like i said their pass defense is 76th in the nation and last week versus troy troy had a wide receiver one single wide receiver go off for two huge touchdown plays i believe both were over 60 yards and a touchdown and they also that same player had a 77 yard punt return touchdown on iowa so overall It might be speed, it might be defensive backs, it might be missing tackles or what have you, but you can attack this Iowa defense through the air, which is what hopefully the Gophers will start to take advantage of. Don't get stuck on just trying to run, run, run like we've seen the Gophers do time and time again in this matchup. Now, do I want to see Darius Taylor get the ball? Absolutely, but don't force it. Max Brosmer hopefully he's up to speed. Hopefully he's ready to go and take on this Iowa Hawkeyes team. But overall, I think you're going to need the passing game. You know, you can spread it out now across multiple wide receivers and you got to prove it starting this week. But when you're looking at this Iowa defense sacks wise, you've got Herquette who has two, you have Allen who has two, you have Graves who has three and Llewellyn has two. So you have four players that have combined for nine total sacks and in Iowa classic fashion, they also have a defensive touchdown already this early in the season. So Iowa is just getting warmed up and you cannot doubt this team, especially defensively. And so this is going to be a dogfight. It's going to be scrappy. It's going to be classic Big Ten football for the Gophers and Hawkeyes. Now, luckily, this game is at home for the Gophers. So hopefully the fan base can show up and show out and really make this game feel like a home field advantage on top of that it is a maroon out game so hopefully you'll be decked out in your maroon ready to cheer on your golden gophers and give them that extra oomph that extra push to get the dub in this matchup but it's not going to be for the faint of heart it is going to be a close one and my we're going to talk about my biggest three concerns for minnesota heading into week four against the iowa hawkeyes if the gophers don't figure out these three things. If they don't capitalize on these three things, then it could turn into a loss for the Gophers. And we could be looking at a two and two start as we go on our first road trip. Hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully we get a big dub. Hopefully we're three and one heading to Michigan and trying to pull an upset, but we're going to know sooner than later. So let's talk about the three biggest concerns for the Gophers coming up next. First, I would definitely want to talk to you about our friends over at Game Time because Game Time is hands down my favorite ticketing app because they are just the place to be when it comes to finding the greatest deals because Game Time has all the the uh, lowest offers when it comes to buying your tickets lowest price guarantee in fact so if you don't if you find the same seats on a different app for lower game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference that's how sure they are of themselves and their lowest price guarantee but game time also has a new feature called game time picks that lets makes 
getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Uh, Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only the incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste your time searching through the thousands of different offers that they have. But on top of that, as you get warmed up to game time, they have curated deals to make it easier to find the best price on great seats. They have a super deal. They have the seat views before you buy and the lowest price guarantee, along with one of the best cancellation or job loss protection programs in the game. So definitely take advantage and go download the game time app. What are you waiting for? On top of that, my favorite feature is definitely the all in pricing where you can toggle this feature on. You have to go and make sure you toggle the all in prices on and it'll show you the total upfront with no surprise fees at checkout. So you know exactly what you are buying and at the full price you are buying it for. So definitely take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. And it's not just sporting events. You can go to concerts, you can find comedy, you can find live entertainment and more over at game time. Download the game time app today, create an account and use promo code lockdown college for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again, download it game time, create an account and use promo code locked on college. That's L O C K E D O N college for $20 off download game time today. What time is it game time? All right, Gover Sands, this is definitely going to be a shorter show for us this week. But, you know, with the technical difficulties, I just wanted to make sure we get something on the books for you. But like I said, you're not going to want to miss tomorrow's predictions episode either. But let's dive into my three biggest concerns for Minnesota in week four. Now, one of my concerns is Caleb Johnson, plain and simple, because more so his ability to break tackles and force missed tackles has been on notice, and it has been there. 20 missed tackles so far through three games, and in that span, oh yeah, he was the third string running back for game one, the second string running back for game two, and only started for the first time this season in that third game against Troy, meaning he has been balling with over 100 rushing yards in every single game, even though he hasn't been the featured back to start these games off. So we're talking about the number one rusher in the FBS right now with 479 rushing yards through three games and his ability to break tackles is what scares me the most. We saw what Omari and Hampton did to this defense, forcing 12 missed tackles by himself and the team had 20 missed tackles in that first game. Now, since then, the Gophers have had five or less missed tackles in each of their last two games, but they have to keep that going because each of those last two games were against lower tier of opponents and now you play a higher tier opponent a larger tier opponent than even the North Carolina team you lost to on this season and you have to make sure your tackle fundamentals are pristine and on point otherwise Caleb Johnson will eat you alive and that is not what the Gophers can afford in this matchup that is going to need precision on every facet you're going to need special teams precision, defensive precision, and offensive precision. So my number one is Caleb Johnson on my concerns. Now, number two is turnovers. Now, turnovers can be the difference, and it almost always feels like it is the difference in this Iowa versus Minnesota matchup. They always play each other close. And whether it's an interception, whether it's a fumble, whether it's a turnover on downs, there's always a game changing element in the turnover department. So Minnesota has to be sure to take care of the football. The ball has to be the program, which is what coach PJ Fleck always preaches, but now they have to put it into practice and then some against the Iowa Hawkeyes. Now you're at home. So you really got to take care of the ball because the crowd should be backing you up enough to give you that extra momentum, enough to give you that extra push, enough to hopefully frazzle the other team or make it so they can't hear any checks at the line of scrimmage or any audibles they don't hear clearly. And then maybe you can force them into opportunities to turn it over, especially this quarterback who just seems to be a little bit off in his timing, a little bit off in his decision-making. And I think the Gophers can force an interception or two against Cade McNamara. So my biggest concern is not turning the ball over ourselves. If the Gophers make sure that they don't turn the ball over, I think this one should play into the Gophers favor at home, but that is a big if. Now, my third and final thing is kind of two things. It's not being stubborn offensively, but it's also Max Brosmer being fully up to speed. Now, like we mentioned, Iowa is fifth in the nation in run defense, meaning you can't just be stubborn and run, run, run like PJ Fleck likes to do. Otherwise, you will go three and out or have short drives. And that's when all of a sudden I was taking over the time of possession and 
making this game far too close, but also then capitalizing on a turnover or one mistake and winning the game in close fashion. Darius Taylor needs to be used, plain and simple, but he can be used in the passing game. And keeping your offense unpredictable could be the difference between winning and losing this one, but that hasn't been a strength of Coach Flack on most occasions, in my opinion. So hopefully he isn't stubborn offensively. He keeps it unpredictable. He lets the Gophers pass the ball and what have you. But with that, in passing the ball is Max Brosmer has to be up to speed. He cannot be rushed. He cannot be rattled. He cannot be frazzled. Now, North Carolina, he was all of that, but it was game one. It was his biggest crowd he's ever played in front of. It was the first time he had live bullets coming at him because you don't see a defensive end trying to murder you until you actually get into the actual play of college football. Now, all that happened in game one, but ever since then, he has responded and responded and responded, and he has looked fairly decent or to really good in the last two games. But the last two games have been against lower opponents, so Max Brosmer has to show that he is up to speed and can play with this Big Ten speed against one of the best defenses in the conference because Iowa's defense is going to be faster in North Carolina. They're going to probably be better in North Carolina, and you have to prove that North Carolina was a a fluke and more of a one-time thing than the norm uh, in this situation, because it's not going to get easier. Iowa's defense is going to be tough this week. Michigan's defense is going to be tough the next week. USC's defense is going to be tough the week after that. So you have to be up to speed. You have to be able to read quickly. You have to be able to do the quick game. You have to be able to pass the ball. Otherwise, it's going to be a long day for your Golden Gophers. So those are my three biggest concerns. Now, tomorrow, we're going to drop our prediction show. Saturday morning, I'm probably going to drop a show that's going to talk about three players we need to step up, three players we got to stop for the Iowa Hawkeyes, along with our strengths, weaknesses, and a make or break in this game. So be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss those conversations. But like I said, tomorrow's predictions is a great one. I'll see you then. Row the boat, Sky Yamago Gophers, as always. And please don't forget to hit subscribe.